Beloved, you are listening to Grace Life Comey Podcast, a platform commissioned by God to raise men into completeness in Christ Jesus. We believe that you will be blessed beyond measure as you give yourself wholly to this divinely inspired teaching. Through God's servant Pastor Chimdi Ohahuna. Grace to you, Jesus is Lord. chapter 5 now in the Beatitudes. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. Uh, we look at blessed are the poor in spirit and then we move over to um, um, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Amen for Jesus. Amen to Jesus. We were looking at um, 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 we looked at hunger after righteousness and now we are looking at um, thirst. We looked at thirst the last episode and we are going to continue that in this episode. And I believe that um, we're going to have a glorious time in God's presence. Amen to Jesus. Now, in the, in the previous service, we were able to do, know the meaning of the word thirst. And, you know, from there, we were able to, you know, get understanding into what it means to test after righteousness. Now, we're going to begin with another understanding of test. And uh, this is where I'm going to be um, wrapping, up, wrapping up on thirst. Amen to Jesus. Now, to test means to painfully feel the want of and eagerly long for those things by which the soul is refreshed, supported, and strengthened. To taste, to painfully feel the want of, and eagerly long for those things by which the soul is refreshed, supported, and strengthened. This is the second meaning of thirst. Now we have three meanings, and we have to merge two of them together because we're kind of you know saying similar things. Praise God forevermore. And we're looking at the second meaning today, which happens to be the third meaning, but we're taking that the second. Because we made a test and two together, praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now, so to thirst for righteousness um, goes beyond the mere want or desire for righteousness, praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. Um, in economics, they say um, effective demand is comes in when money is attached to purchasing power or money is attached to wants or desires. Um, basically, wants or desires amount to nothing without effect. Um, purchasing power. Once or desires becomes effective demands where purchasing power is attached to it. Now this one, I, I just use that to you know, make us understand what it means as you actually to test for righteousness. And the test for righteousness is it's not just a want or desire for righteousness. Now everybody in quote wants righteousness. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Everybody in, you know, um, 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 even the sinner even wants you know to do things right at the point in time. Are you get what I'm saying? There's an inner desire in us to want to do it right. Praise God forevermore. That's how we have the conscience. Are, are we together? The conscience is the inner desire in man to do it right. Praise God forevermore. That, that that's the reason why you see that even when people have you know said that conscience may cause iron, once in a while the conscience still pricks them. Praise God forevermore, and they try to quite shut it out and shut it off. Praise Jesus forevermore. Now that want or desire is there. Amen to Jesus. Not any desire in everyone. But um, the thirst for righteousness goes beyond the want or desire for righteousness. It goes beyond just what your conscience desires. Praise God forevermore. That's why it goes beyond a want or desire into an effective demand. There is a purchasing power attached. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. So the, the thirst for righteousness goes beyond the want or desire for righteousness. It goes into a painful want or desire for it. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to So it's not just a want or desire for it. There is a painful want and desire for righteousness. When, let me use the word, the painful desperation comes into this want and desire, it has become what? A thirst for righteousness. Amen to Jesus. While it's still a want and desire, it's not yet a thirst for righteousness. It's not yet a thirst for righteousness. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen and amen. amen. All right. This painful want is called a pang. Now, um, as I've heard about the hunger pang, praise God forevermore. Um, also, thirst has a pang too, praise God forevermore. So, you, you have the, what we call the hunger pang and the thirst pang, praise God forevermore. They are both pains. You say, when you hear, I have there's a hunger pang. It's a pain that is, you know, caused due to hunger. Praise God forevermore. And thirst also has that pang. Praise God forevermore. So it's the thirst for righteousness is the pang for righteousness. Praise God forevermore. It's the pang for righteousness. Amen to Jesus. So it's desperate. It's, it's a desperate desire. Is it? It's 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 a um. A, a, let me use the word. It's a um a, a deadly desire. As um, shall we put it? A deadly desire. Praise God forevermore. A deadly. 
passionate, desperate desire. Because pain can make people go the extreme. Praise God forevermore. Now, pain can make people go to even where they don't uh, expect they would ever gone to, would ever gone to, to get a uh, solution. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. All right. Now, so let's look at the test pan more. The test for righteousness pan. All right. Test pans or hunger pains or um, uh, uh, um, or uh, hunger pains are natural reactions to an empty stomach. Praise God forevermore. Both the hunger pains and the test pans, they are natural reactions to a hungry stomach. Praise God forevermore. Amen to Jesus. To an empty stomach. Praise God forevermore. In fact, um, the hunger p- um, pangs comes as a result of the release of a, 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 a um, um, the, the, the brain sending a message to the to the stomach that meant you're empty. And then if a, uh, a chemical is released to, to in a, a awaiting food, and when food does not come, the chemical begins to work on, you know, um, the fluid begins to work on the intestine, and that's what brings about, you know, ulcers, praise God forevermore. So that pain is a message sent that come, the stomach is empty, it needs to be filled. It's also a pain sense that the, 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 the body is dehydrated, are we together, and it has to be rehydrated, amen, to Jesus, hallelujah, and it, it, it comes both in the stomach, praise God for all, I'm going to be looking at, um, most of the time, we've already, we've, over the years, we've already learned about the hunger pang, I would love to talk about the hunger pang, uh, I would have loved to talk about it in those who hunger, hunger for righteousness, sake. praise God for all, uh, but you know, uh, it, it's, in the, it's, 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 it's in this test that we're looking at the pang um, subject, but uh, maybe we might have to go over to, um, for the hunger, you know, for righteousness, sake. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. So, so um, it, it both, you know, they show themselves in the stomach. Amen to Jesus. They cause a gnawing feeling or an empty sensation in the abdomen. Praise God forevermore. They cause ignoring feeling or an empty sensation in the abdomen. Now, more over the time, we have heard about the hunger pang. Praise God forevermore. Many of the times, we've not heard about the test pang. Uh, when I began to um, do a little study on this, and I began to understand, wow, actually, you know, some of the times when we feel pang in our stomach, we most often think that it's a hunger pang. But some of the times, it's not even a hunger pang. Sometimes it is a test pang. <laughs> Amen to Jesus. When studying, I began to understand this, praise God forevermore. And they are both in the stomach, praise God. Amen. The Bible says, the belly shall flow rivers of living water. The belly there speaks of the, of the spirit man, praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now, following the research conducted in, in, uh, in, in Pakistan, praise God forevermore, in, uh, uh, between March, First and 2000 and um, 2002. The objective was to describe the frequency of dehydration as a medical cause of acute abdominal pain. Praise God forevermore. That's the purpose of the research. And actually, they were able to get a, a conclusion to that. And um, all the patients reporting with abdominal pain to the surgical outpatients and department or the emergency department were reviewed in the study. The clinical findings in all cases were studied along with the mood of their management. An outcome. Now, the result of all the patients presenting with abdominal pains, um, 303% were suffering from dehydration, dehydration related abdominal pain. Praise God forevermore. Well, that's serious, you know. 303% of them were suffering from dehydration related abdominal pain. Now, most of, more often than not, when we feel abdominal, abdominal pains, what comes to the mind is what? The hunger pain. Is that also the hunger pain? But now, these are researchers. And they were able to discover that men, 303% of these people were suffering from dehydration related pain. Amen. And I would not, you know, object to it. Why? Because I would not object to it. Why? Because um, um, we, in our last study, we understood that, you know, um, 60% of the male human body is made up of water, and 25% of the female human body is made up of water. Amen to Jesus. So, most of the time, more often than not, you see, we have the, the uh, hydration issue as some of us not even take note of it praise god forevermore hallelujah to jesus all right now they were predominantly male and in a ratio of 8.7 to 1 mostly in the second and third decades of their life now if, if, well, uh, i began i i did a, I, I saw something once and i understood that in a, in a in a kind of study that as you grow older your metabolism grows slower so if you don't take note of the, your need for water amen to jesus so even when you are dehydrating you may not take note and because you don't feel thirsty uh, and so you may not even notice that you are dehydrated and so that's why it's advised that as you grow older you take more water because you know metabolism slows and you don't even notice that you are dehydrated praise god forevermore so we can see that people who suffer this way within the second and third decades of their life so within their 20s and their 30s 
praise God forevermore, hallelujah to Jesus. All these cases were suffering from acute or chronic dehydration. Uh, all these cases were suffering from acute and chronic dehydration and were previously diagnosed by a general practitioner as acute abdominal and referred for surgical condition. You see what I'm saying? Now, so these people were suffering from um, acute pain, uh, abdominal pain and their previous consultant referred them for surgical operation. But unknown to them, the actual issue was what? Dehydration, praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now, so we're just trying to go a little, you know, scientific here and a little medical here. Just to help us understand that there is something called thirst pang. Amen to Jesus. And it is real. And as it happens in the physical, it also happens what? In the spiritual. Praise God forevermore. Now, Bishop Benson also says something. So, what the easiest way to understand the spiritual is to use the physical. Praise God forevermore. So, some of the time, most of the things that some who might have owed to maybe hunger, pang, and maybe some some other abdominal issues were just dehydration issues. Are you getting what I'm saying? Praise God forevermore. Now, so associated with the symptoms included vomiting in 4.26% of the people, backache in 91.2% of the people, headache in 95.6% of the people, and pain in lower limbs in 97.1% of the cases. 83.8% required indoor management with intravenous food. All the patients became asymptomatic, which is having or showing no cases of what diseases with rehydration therapy. So when they were rehydrated, what happened was that they were not sick again. Praise God forevermore. So what they needed was more hydration. Amen to Jesus. Why are we going all through all this? Um, we're going through this so we just understand that there's something called um, thirst pang, and it also applies in the spiritual. Praise God forevermore. We looked at hunger pang in the first study. We are looking at thirst pang in this study. Now, so what's the, what was the conclusion of this research? The, the conclusion was that dehydration is a possible cause of severe, severe abdominal pain. Amen to Jesus. Now, there's a need to educate the general public that this is actually real. Praise God forevermore. Now, in relation to our subject on that study, the test for righteousness is the painful feeling for the want of righteousness. Praise God forevermore. Painful feeling for the want of righteousness. is a desperate, desperate feeling. Is a pang for righteousness. And I tell you, you see, many of the times we've not understood this, you know, and some of the times even we've not been able to educate people what they are going through. And with that, they, they, they means what they suffer for ignorance. Now imagine these people who came for this research. They were already, by their previous physician, they were already built, booked for surgery. Are <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So imagine with all this research done on them, so they have just gone to the surgical theater and they tear them open and at the end of the day they find nothing. Are you getting me? And then they go for another series of tests again, and they go to another series of tests again, and they keep giving them plenty, plenty English, only for the issue of just hydration. Are we together? Hydration therapy, they were fine. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to your soul. We must understand that um, 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 righteousness pang is real. Amen to Jesus. And it's a painful feeling for the ones of what? Righteousness. Amen to Jesus. This painful feeling is felt in the soul of man. Why? Because it is a feeling. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, when we deal with feelings, we are dealing with the soul. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because the soul that has emotion, intellect, and uh, um, um, willpower, praise God forevermore. The soul that ha 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 is the seat of the emotion, the seat of the intellect, and the seat of willpower. Praise God forevermore. The soul is the soul the, is, is the seat of the senses, the sense of tasting, feeling, uh, 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 um, smelling, all the five senses. The soul happens to be the seat. So when we are dealing with feeling, yeah, we are dealing with the soul. Are you getting what I'm saying? Praise God forevermore. Now, so it makes us understand that this pang for righteousness actually manifests in the soul. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. A -a Amen to Jesus. Now, so it's a painful feeling in the soul of man. That is why it is an eager long for those things by which the soul is refreshed, supported, and strengthened. You see that? Is a what? Is a, is, a, is, a, is a painful feeling in the soul of man. In the soul of man. Now, that, that's why, you see, righteousness is beyond just um, a spiritual a spiritual identity. We learned that very well. We made the righteousness of God in Christ. Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. For he made him to be sinning in the that we made the righteousness of God in him. 
praise God forevermore. Many of us are just excited about that verse of scripture. I like the way another translation put it. Say, God took our sin and poured it into Jesus. And took his right dress and poured it into us. I like that transition. Are you getting what I'm saying? But most of us are just excited about that. And we just end it as the spirit. Oh, our spirits are perfect. Yes, our spirits are perfect. But you see, the pang for righteousness is not actually in, in, in manifested in the spirit, it's manifested in the soul. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why it can even call the attention of the body. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because if the pound is not in the soul, it cannot call the attention of the body. Praise Jesus forevermore. Hallelujah. And see, that's why it's an eager long for those things which the soul, by which the soul is refreshed, supported, and strengthened. Amen. Amen. The soul wants to be refreshed. The soul wants to be supported. The soul wants to be strengthened. And it's only righteousness that can refresh the soul. Are you getting what I'm saying? That can support the soul and can what? Strengthen the soul. Praise Jesus forevermore. Now, without the, without the righteousness of God, the soul is dehydrated. Are, are we together? It's not supported and it's weak. Amen. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. All right, the taste for righteousness creates a pain in the soul that no one else and nothing else can suit or stop except for the righteousness of God. Are we together? The pain, the 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 the, the for righteousness creates a pain in the soul that no one else and nothing else can suit or stop. Try everything to not suit it. Try everything to not stop it. Only the righteousness of God can suit and stop this pain. It not only suits the pain, it stops the pain. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to us. No, I was listening to um, 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 a, a telecast today, and we were talking about people who have been, you know, Christians who have been persecuted in nations. You know, and these Christians, some of the children, the children, they see their parents, their parents killed in their front. Praise God forevermore. Some of them see their parents raped in their front. He said, but uh, he said, the, and, and the person said, it amazes them how. Jesus still comforts these people, these children. Are you getting what I'm saying? See, comfort them. See, comfort, and they are still standing for you. you see, you can't explain this. Praise God, forever more. <laughs> you can't explain. It. That's that's the power of the righteousness of God. It suits the soul. Are you getting what I'm saying? It refreshes the soul. It strengthens the soul, and it supports the soul. Are we together? Righteousness is, is not just limited to the spirit man. You see, that's why we always always make Christians and make um, um, believers the Lord just understand that yes, you have confessed that the righteousness of God in Christ, but this thing is to it has a work it does in your soul that also transmits to your body and manifests to your body. So righteousness is beyond just the shout of my spirit man, it's actually what my soul feels. And you get what I'm saying. The righteousness of God strengthens the soul of the child of God. It, ref it refreshes the soul and it supports the soul. It's the righteousness of God that keeps you refreshed. Just the revelation that I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Ah, he who knew no sin was made sin. And I might be made the righteousness of God in him. Oh, if not for him, I should have been damned and destroyed. You see, just that understanding refreshes the soul. It strengthens the soul. It supports the soul. It reminds me of, 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 of you know, um, uh, I was watching um, uh, a pro, uh, kind of a program, and there was this 92-year-old year old, year old um, woman who, um, um, a hoodlum just entered into her car, opened the door, and sat by the side, and she was in the car. She was about to drive home, you know, from the shopping mall. And just entered, and they pointed the gun at, gun at her, and he told her, "Give me all your money." And she told him with a stern voice, "I'm not gonna give you all my money." She said, "Why, baby?" He said, "I'm not gonna give you my money." And he was like, "I'm gonna shoot you if you don't give me money." And she said, "Oh, you're gonna shoot me." You know what? If you shoot me, I'll die, and I'll go to heaven. But you die, and you go to hell. <laughs> Oh, the guy was shocked to his bones. He was, ah, uh, what's this? He was shocked to his bones. And he kept quiet. He couldn't help himself. So that she took the opportunity to preach to him. I think at the end of the day, she led him to Christ. 92 year old woman. Come on, that, that, that's the revelation of righteousness that strengthens. And she led him to Christ. And she said, after leading him to Christ, she told him, 
He told him, You can make this prayer with me. And she, he said, You want to receive Jesus? He said, You led him to Christ. After leading to Christ, she gave him all the money she had on him. What he asked for initially at one point, after leading him to Christ, she gave it to him at Christ's point. And that was $10. She gave it to him. And the guy was shocked. He said, Let me tell you something. This is what righteousness does to, does to the soul it strengthens, it refreshes, and it supports the soul. Are we together? Amen. Now, 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 you see, the thirst for righteousness creates, like we said, a pain that um, nothing else can suit except the righteousness of God can suit. This pain is a cry from the soul for the righteousness of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, that pain is a cry for the soul. See, even with the conscience, even with the conscience, there is still a cry for something that is bigger than the conscious. There is still a cry for something that is bigger than morals. We talked about that um, in, in one of our studies. That, you see, um, this thing is bigger than morals. Are you getting what I'm saying? There is still a cry in man for something that is bigger than morals. That which is bigger than morals is the righteousness of God. The Bible tells us our righteousness is about, about feeling rights. Our righteousness are moralities. Moralities. Are you getting what I'm saying? That which is bigger than our righteousness, that which is all encompassing, is the righteousness of God. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to us. And the, 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 the pang of righteousness, the taste of righteousness, is a cry from the soul of man. For what? For the righteousness of God. This cry is in every man. Amen to Jesus. The pang can either be relational, fulfillment, acceptance, love, career, and the list goes on. Praise God forevermore. Everyone has at least one of these pain in his or her soul. Are we together? Now, so when we see people, we see people that some of them are just given to their career. They are just only career. Everything life is just about career to them. Uh, the, the beginning and the end of their life is career. The summary of their life is career. It's the, the reason for such a dedication is because there is a plan for righteousness that they are trying to use career to fill up. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Some it is relationships. Oh, they just they are just sold out to a relationship. They just want people to like them. They just want to have relationships around. I'm not against relationships. Are you getting what I'm saying? I believe in relationships. Are you getting what I'm saying? But when you begin to live for relationships, instead of living for Christ, it is the pang of righteousness you are trying to what? Soothe with what? Relationships. Are you getting what I'm saying? Some is ambition. Some is a quest for fulfillment. A dream car, a dream house, a dream life, a dream just a dream, a dream, 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 dream. dream. When dreams become the focus instead of Christ, it is a desperate attempt to suit the pang of righteousness with what? Dreams. Are we together? And this is where you see a lot of people are missing it. That's a lot of people are missing it. Even sometimes Christians, they fall victim for this. Are you getting what I'm saying? A lot of people are missing it. We need to understand what is what the cry of our soul man is. Are we together? We have to understand it. Amen to Jesus. All right, now, the unsaved use relationships, pursuits, ambitions, alcohol, sex, penance, drugs, nicotine, and the list goes on to suit or try to stop this pain. But these are to no what avail. The more they try, the more it doesn't work. The more they try to suit the pain, the pang, the cry for righteousness in the soul, the more it doesn't work. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. The more it doesn't work. Amen. I, 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 the reason for this is because this pain is not a physical pain, but a spiritual pain. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, when you're dealing with a physical pain, you take medications, you, you apply spirit, gentian, violet, and every other, take painkillers, and you can bring an end to the pain. Is that not so? Now, how do you soothe or stop a spiritual pain? Using physical measures. Are you getting what I'm saying? And that's where many people miss it. Using things that cannot stop the pain to stop the pain. It's not going to work. Amen to Jesus. The plan for righteousness is not a spirit, physical pain. It's a spiritual pain that shows itself in the soul. Are we together? Praise God forevermore. Now, it's a spiritual pain resident in the soul. That's the pang for righteousness. The cry for righteousness. The thirst for righteousness. The thirst pang for righteousness is a spiritual pain that is resident in the soul. See, this is why we pray for people a lot. 
we, don't, why, we have to pray because many people don't know that this pain they are experiencing is actually the test for righteousness, the 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 the, the, the pang for righteousness in their soul. Is there? I get what I'm saying, and nothing else in this world can soothe or stop you. And you get what I'm saying. And every attempt to use any other way, any other means to suit it or stop it will be to no avail. And as I say, people they try different things, and they get the pang for righteousness it keeps crying. You know, when you when you have not satisfied that pang, it will continuously cry. It doesn't take a break from crying. So it cried today, didn't cry tomorrow. The pain, I felt the pain today, I didn't feel it tomorrow. I, I think I'll listen to someone who was going to express me a particular pain for years. Now, you can't explain how that person would have been living. Praise God forevermore. Now, if you, for example, if you're having a migraine for three days continuously, are you get what I'm saying? You can't explain how that person, that three days will be for the person. Now, how can you explain somebody who has been having the pang for righteousness for three years? My God. If you cannot e e comprehend the migraine for three days, are you get what I'm saying? And you're like, how this is this is this is this is beyond what can tell. How can you now explain the pang for righteousness for three years? And some for ten years, some for twenty years, some for thirty years. This is why we pray for those who have not met Jesus. Are you get what I'm saying? Because they are dying in pain. Praise God forevermore. Allah to Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Now, it is a spiritual presence. So as a result, nothing physical can suit or stop this pain. Nothing physical. Don't keep. Don't try anything physical. It don't suit it. It don't stop it. Amen to Jesus. Now, although this pain is a cry from the spirit man to God, as a result, no one other than God can suit or stop this pain. Also, this pain is a cry from the spirit man to God. As a result, no one and nothing else can suit or stop this pain. It's a cry also from the spirit man to God. It's a cry from the soul to God. It's also a cry from the spirit to God. See, that's why the, the text pan for righteousness, <laughs> it's beyond what can explain. Are you getting what I'm saying? Resident in the soul and it's from the spirit. So the soul is crying to God. The spirit is crying to God. Can you imagine that? Now, God, see, from the fall of Adam, that became the cry of humanity. That's why every man has tried different ways to reach God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Man has tried different ways to please God. You know, I, I was watching, you know, a, a, a kind of a documentary. We were talking about a particular um, set of people, you know, and actually they were, they were, they were the religion, and, and they were like, you know, they were talking about human sacrifice they used to offer. And they said they used to have, you have offer human sacrifice a lot then, you know, and they, they, at a point in time they offered 20,000 people, 20,000 people as sacrifice. And the person was saying, of, of, of recent, we've not been having a lot of human sacrifice. And that's why, you know, the gods are not happy because I'm like, you know, there's this desire to please a higher being. Are you getting what I'm saying? It came into man after the fall of man. And on our own, in our attempts to please God, we are walking our righteousness which is confusing us. Righteousness is God's way of pleasing himself that he put in man. Are you getting what I'm saying? Only God can please himself. The Bible says that we serve God we serve, we can, um, through, through Christ we can serve God what? Acceptably. Another translation said that he said Christ has served God perfectly. <laughs> he has served the Father perfectly. So we are just there what? Fully in praise God forevermore. Righteousness is God. God being pleased. God pleasing himself and giving us the ability to please himself. Oh, wow. So why do I have to struggle to please him when he has already pleased himself and he has put that ability in me? Praise Jesus forevermore. Hallelujah. So it's a cry from the spirit man. Are we together? It's also a cry from the soul man. Are we together? This cry is done by the unsaved sinner because he's or her, he or she totally lacks the righteousness of God and has never experienced it. Now, so there's a cry from the soul and there's a cry from the spirit. The cry from the spirit for righteousness to God is the cry of the unsaved sinner, the spirit man. Why? Because he totally lacks righteousness and he has no what? He has not gotten it before. I get what I'm saying. Now, so everybody's not born again. The cry of righteousness 
the, the pan of righteousness, the, 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 the test pain of righteousness, for righteousness is from their spirit man. Because they never got never got righteousness. And imagine somebody living with this pain for 30 years. Are you gonna say? I, I just gave a little scenario. Live with them, somebody who has been living in the migraine for three days non-stop. And imagine somebody who's living with this pain, the test for righteousness for 20 years. Man, that should move compassion in the heart of believers in the Lord Jesus to pray for such people. 20 years. Hmm. That's not that's not a beautiful time period to live with this pain. Are we together? Amen to Jesus. Now, you see, when the, the cry for righteousness comes from the spirit man, it's a cry for something new. Are you getting what I'm saying? Hallelujah to Jesus. On the other hand, it is a cry from the spirit man of the sense of God for refreshing, for support, and for strengthening. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, when it's from the spirit man of the unsaved, it's for something new because he has never had it before. Are you getting me? But when it's from the spirit man of the child of God for the same, from the, of the saint, the spirit man of the saints. It is a cry for what? Refreshing, a cry for support, a cry for strengthening. And God gives this via the continuous revelation of his righteousness. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are we together? Now we have seen when, when it comes, when this cry comes from the spirit man of the sinner, or when it comes from the spirit man of the saints. The spirit man of the sinner is that a cry for something I've never had before. It's something new. And I'm dying. Amen to Jesus. I'm dead. In fact, I'm dying. Are we together? All right. Now, from the sense, it is a cry for refreshing, for strengthening, and for support. Are we together? And God gives this by word, the continuous revelation of His righteousness. Now, Psalm 42, verse 1 says, To the chief musician, Masculine, for the sons of Korah, as a heart panted after the water flows. So panted my soul after thee, O oh God. You see that there? You see that there? Is a cry for the water books. Are you getting what I'm saying? As a heart man is the world. The word heart there also means there. Amen to Jesus. Now the 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 let me know is the word mystery or the idea behind the, the what the, the cry of the deer for the water books is is simple is simply what happens to the deer. Now when the, the lion begins to pursue his deer, what happens is that the deer begins to run at a top speed and it begins to release um, 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 some, um, you know, hormones and enzymes in the uh, fluids in it. And this causes it to begin to smell. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? It begins to smell. Why? Because adrenaline is released at the peak, it's afraid, and it releases the more it gets angry, the more it gets afraid, and it runs. Um, harder it releases adrenaline which also releases a smell it makes it begin to smell and with that smell the lion can trace it are you get what i'm saying it doesn't need to see it to, to trace it with the smell it can trace so the the heart begins to run and the lion begins to smell it the heart is running the lion is smelling it so the chase continues so what the what the deer looks for at that point in time it looks for what for a water book are you get what i'm saying it runs looking for a source of water why because the moment it enters into that water body, the whole smell dies. And once the smell dies, what happens is that the lion can no longer trace it again. In fact, what actually happens is that while the lion is chasing the, the deer, while it's chasing the heart, if it loses sight of the heart, what it does is that it roars again. And when it roars, the deer gets angry again, it gets sorry, gets scared again, releases adrenaline, starts running again, and the smell comes out again. And the lion picks up, okay, that's where it is now. It is at this point, and the lion starts chasing. So the, the cycle of death, <laughs> chasing it continues until he gets a water book. Once he jumps into the water book, it kills the smell totally. And then the lion can never trace it again. Praise God forevermore. This is desperate crap. Do you understand the desperation now? That's the desperation. That's just a way to explain this desperation. Praise God forevermore. And that's a cry. It's a cry that comes from the spirit of the of, 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 of the of the sinner and also the spirit of the of the saint. But they are for two different purposes. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to now. So this cry of pain is um, for the for the for the uh, follow the Lord Jesus for the um, saints is for more revelation of the righteousness of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? And this cry of pain usually comes due to break in fellowship with God via his word, which is Christ Jesus. 
and, and prayer. Are we together? Now, you begin to have this cry when you have broken fellowship. Because once fellowship keeps going on, you don't need to ask God for revelation of his righteousness. Are, are we together? The Bible says the righteousness is revealed to us from faith to faith. And the Bible says in Romans 10 verse 10, says, faith comes by hearing and by hearing word, the word of God. So the more we hear the word of God, the more faith comes into us. The more the righteousness of God is what? Revealed to us. And you get what I'm saying? So you don't cry for it. You don't cry. You, it's, it is the Father's delight to reveal his, more, more of his righteousness to you. Are you get what I'm saying? It's the Father's delight to reveal more of himself to his children. Are you get what I'm saying? So the more faith comes by the word, the more the righteousness will grow from faith to faith. And the righteousness of God is revealed to us from what? By faith to faith. So it's not what you cry for. You don't cry for revelation of God's righteousness. No. It comes in the place of fellowship. The more you stay in God's word, the more you stay in prayers, it comes. You don't pray for it. But now, if you have to start crying for it, it means that there is a break in what? Fellowship. Are you getting what I'm saying? When there is a break in fellowship, what happens? You discover that you begin to cry for what? Refreshing, for support, and for strengthening. Some call it the cry for reawakening. Some call it the cry for revival. When that cry for revival begins to come, check it. There has been a break in fellowship. And you get what I'm saying? Amen to Jesus. And you see, we see this truth in the same Psalm 42. Look at verse 2 and then verse 5 and verse 6. Verse 2 says, My soul thirsted for God. You see that? For the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? When shall I come? That means this verse is talking from um, 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 uh, uh, this was writing by uh, uh, Korah. He was talking from, he said, when shall I come? That means he had been out of God's sight. Are you getting what I'm saying? Maybe he had been on some duties that had not been able to make him appear before God. And then he said, my soul is testing for God. That means there had been a break in appearance before God. Are you getting what I'm saying? For reasons best known to him, he has not been able to appear before God for a while. Are you getting what I'm saying? They had not been able to go to the temple for a while or whatever. Are you getting me? And you know those days they had to go to the temple to really in quote have an encounter before God, with, uh, have an encounter with God. Now for them to pray to God, they need to kneel down and, and position to Jerusalem and every of the, every of those you know those those things you have to do before you can appear before God. But that's the beauty of the new creation, the new testament. We don't need to kneel and position at a place for us to appear before God. Are you getting what I'm saying? We don't need to even come to to, to a sanctuary in court and appear before God. The Bible says, no, you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit. It was here 24 7. We are the Bible says, Fetch us, can't find pray with us. Season 24 7. We are appearing before God. I get what I'm saying. That's why, in our time, there is no reason for break of fellowship. Are you get what I'm saying? Then they have to go to the temple, to the to the synagogue to hear the Torah read to them. Now you have the word hidden in your heart. Come on. If you say you've not it in your heart, you have it in your phone, your tablet is available at every time to you. Are you get what I'm saying? There is no reason for break of fellowship. You don't, there's no reason to start praying for personal revival. If you are praying for personal revival, man, it is where all I can see. Now let's look at verse 5 and see. Verse 5 says, Why are that cast down on my soul? You see depression now. You see that? The end result of break of fellowship is what? Depression. Why are that cast down on my soul? And why are that disquieted between me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him, for he is the help of my of my of his is the help of his. Shall I yet praise him for, for the help of his what countenance? Um six says, Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. See, first he says, Why is that cast down? Now he says, My soul is cast down. That speaks of depression. Now you get what I'm saying? Now, depression sets in when there's a break in fellowship. Child of God, depression is a spiritual oppression. Leave medical talk, leave all those psychological psychologists plenty talk. Depression is a spirit. Is a spiritual, and it comes into the life of a child of God where he breaks fellowship with when he or she breaks fellowship with the Lord. Are you get what I'm saying? So long as fellowship is intact, the devil cannot depress you. He can't depress you. I don't know what I'm speaking to you. That force of depression that has been troubling you, your mind for the past three days. In the name of Jesus, I break his hold over your mind in the name of Jesus. I curse it now in the name of Jesus. And I decree be made whole and made loose from the force of depression in the name of Jesus. Get back your fellowship now in Jesus' name. It says, Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and of the Hermonite from the hill Mizar. You can see he was far from 
<laughs> where as it where God was. Are you getting what I'm saying? Praise God forevermore. But you know the beauty of it now? God is in us. Christ in us the hope of glory. I don't need to go to Zion in quote the physical Zion to have a fellowship with the Lord. I fellowship with him 24-7. He's in me. That's the beauty of the new creation. Child of God, you don't have any excuse to break fellowship. You don't have any excuse to start testing for righteousness. And you get what I'm saying? No excuse. Because all that you need to remain in fellowship and to enjoy the continuous revelation of God's righteousness is in you. Praise God forevermore. All right. Now, this truth is further buttressed by the truth we learned earlier. In our previous lesson, we learned that um, uh, the test for righteousness is satisfied once and for all at new birth. Remember, Jesus told the woman, uh, the, uh, the Samaritan woman at uh, 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 Jacob, he said, This water I give to you, when you drink of it, you will not test any longer. That's, that's the water of what? Life. It's the water of righteousness. I get I understood that when you drink the water of life, you drink the water of God's righteousness, your test of for righteousness is satisfied once and for all. Are you getting what I'm saying? You're never meant to get tested for righteousness again. Now, due to this, the test for righteousness no more arises, but we have to continuously keep ourselves conscious about the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We have fellowship. We've learned that the last time. Is that not so? Now, so we have a responsibility to keep ourselves conscious of it. If we stop being conscious of it, what happens is that we start, let me say what, dehydrating. We are not drinking one night. Are you getting what I'm saying? We start, our soul starts dehydrating, our body starts dehydrating. Are you getting what I'm saying? But our spirit is intact. But because we have lost fellowship, we've broken fellowship, sorry. Amen to Jesus. Now, failure to keep ourselves conscious via fellowship will lead to breaking fellowship, which finally results in test value. Are you getting what I'm saying? So that's why we have to keep the fellowship, children of God. Keep it. You can't you, you don't need a test fund when you can have the fellowship. Are <laughs> you getting what I'm saying? Praise God for more. Hallelujah, Jesus. This is why we must maintain fellowship with God to prevent test bank. The test bank manifests as lack of desire to feed on the word of God and pray. That's lack of desire to fellowship. When you start noticing that, you don't have a desire to fellowship. Remember somebody told us in church, he said, hey, Pastor, what if I wake up on Sunday morning and I don't feel like coming to church? A spirit, sorry, a spirit tells me not to come to church. And we tell you that spirit is the devil. <laughs> it can't be God. I get what I'm saying. When you are no longer finding delight in, 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 in the word of God, in studying the word of God and praying, the, the, the uh, uh, scripture says, I found that word and I didn't eat them and they were joy and they were to my soul. When you are no longer finding this joy in studying the word of God and in praying, come on, there's something wrong there. Are you getting what I'm saying? You have to watch it. It doesn't manifest as depression. It says, why that cows are not my soul? They say, oh my God, my soul is cows. Are you getting what I'm saying? Manifest as depression. Manifest as passion and zeal for the things of God. Are, you, are, you, are we together? For lack of passion and zeal for the things of God. These are test bounds. Are you getting what I'm saying? Lack of spiritual sensitivity and alertness. Test bounds. Are you getting what I'm saying? Anxiety and fear. And the list of negative goes on. See, once these things start cropping up in your life, know that they are beginning to experience test bounds. And it's not meant to be for you as a child of God. So what do you do? Go back to fellowship. Um, but can I take of the blessed memory? Can I take of the blessed memory once asked? When you start feeling depressed or anxious or whatever, what do you do? He said, when I start feeling all that, I know that my word level is getting low. So what I do is I go back to feeding on the world. Simple. Are you getting what I'm saying? I go back to feeding on the world. Don't let the text span come in. Are we together? Now, text span for righteousness in the sense is not the end. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's not the end. Praise God forevermore. It is just a warning signal to the saints. Are you getting me? So I'll oh, have a test bank now. That's the end of my no, 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 it's not the end. Your spirit man is righteous forever. It is it, 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 it is the one and final righteousness. But now the problem is your soul and your body. So it's not the end, it's just a signal. Are you getting me? Praise God forevermore. It's a signal which you have to attend to quickly. Are we together? In the event that the third part, the test bank for righteousness shows up in a sense, he or she is to immediately suit and stop it by the study of the word of God and prayer. That's by fellowship with God. Everything you need to do to fellowship with God, go and take multi vitamins. Are you getting what I'm saying? Some of the times I was talking to one of my mentees and he told me, he said, when he doesn't feel like studying the word of God, what he does is that he just picks up his Bible and he starts reading a favorite story in the Bible. And he says, from there, the hunger comes up. Are you getting what I'm saying? 
Somebody maybe you have to, you may just have to start worshiping, just singing a worship song that may just make your spirit sweet again. And before you know, you just start praying the Holy Ghost. And before you know, you just start enjoying the word of God. But make sure you immediately attend to it. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now, choosing and acting to stop the test found for righteousness by the saints attracts the blessing of God. Are we together? This is why those who test for righteousness are blessed. So now, in your journey, in your journey with your, with God, there will be times where you will have test pans for righteousness. I'm talking to the believer in the Lord Jesus now, the child of God. There are times where it will come up, but it's not the end of your journey. It's just a warning signal. Maybe you have been too busy. Are you getting what I'm saying? Maybe you've been too carried away with some other things. Are you not giving attention to your fellowship with God? It's just a signal. It's a signal calling your attention. Please come back. And what you do is quickly attend to it. Don't don't shed it under the carpet. Don't ward off the red the red light. Attend to it quickly. But for the sinner, the test band will be there for as long as we don't receive you as another person as Savior. You don't have righteousness at all. I will get what I'm saying. Don't, you don't have the righteousness of God at all. So until you do that, the test band, the pain continues. I, I believe that somebody has been blessed. And you're not the son of my voice. You've not made you just another personal savior. This, this is the best of opportunity for you. The best decision you can ever make. It's time to end that test bank for 20 years, for 30 years, for 40 years. I, I saw something uh, uh, of, of a woman who prayed for a husband for 67 years and he finally got body in her Glory to Jesus. I don't know how long your test bank has been. Maybe it might be two years. Whatever, I don't know how long, but see, you can end it today. And I just want you to end it. I encourage you to end it. You want to make this decision, just say this prayer after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I know that I'm a sinner. With my heart, I believe that you died for me. And with my mouth, I confess you as my Lord and personal Savior. Today, I surrender my life to you today. Because you choose me, you chose me, I choose to serve and for the rest of my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus. But I pray for that one brother, that one sister, that man, woman, boy, girl who has made this prayer. Thank you for receiving them, the Lord. Thank you for granting them the grace to serve and follow you to build your life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I want to pray one prayer. Lord Jesus, I receive grace to maintain my fellowship with you. Never to lead a, a test band to come to fellowship. For to live in fellowship, so as not to leave a test bar. Open your mouth and pray. So we can see that it is a zimbra a test umbra a test kapo no zimbra atalas. As I get every a test kibla atas umbra a test kibla box. And every a test kibla atas kibla os kapo ontos. Man tike de a umbra a test kibla ontolo box kete de de box. Madida bada. Ah, I receive grace. I maximize grace to maintain my fellowship with you, dear Abba Father. Never to leave a test band as a signal to come to fellowship, but to remain in fellowship so I will not need a test band again of for righteousness. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Before I pray for us, I want to pray for everyone under the sound of my voice who is sick in their body. We are believing God for healing. I want to join my faith in your faith and let's cause sicknesses and diseases. In the name of Jesus, we cause sicknesses and diseases to the roof. We cause infirmities. We cause inflammations. We cause swelling. Just put your left hand where you are feeling the sickness or disease and lift up your right hand. We cause every form of degeneration. In the name of Jesus. Uh, yes, I cause I cause degenerations. Yeah, there's degen the, the spine that is degenerating. I cause that force degenerating that spine. In the name of Jesus, they are telling you your spine is just degenerating. I cause that that degeneration in that spine. In the name of the Lord Jesus, and I decree regenerating force of the of the word of God it comes in contact with that spine. And in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare every form of tumor, swellings, every form of cancers. We cause you to the root in the name of Jesus. Every every retrogression will command become progression. Every disorder become order. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus. We cast out the spirit of infirmities in the name of Jesus. And we decree every 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 sickness in the soul be destroyed in the name of Jesus. And in the name of Jesus, we command every being of divine being that is no more dead. Get out of that body in the name of Jesus. Now we command objects get out of body. Amen. Movement in the body, get out of the body. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I will declare and declare in the name of Jesus absolute vibration in the name of Jesus. Deliverances and breakthroughs, signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your word today. We appreciate you. We receive our mass divine grace to remain in fellowship with you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Once again, thank you for your time. God bless you. Grace to you. Wow. Beloved, thanks for listening to Grace Life Komi Podcasts. We believe that you've been blessed via this episode. We request that you also remain connected to us via our other social media handles on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, and YouTube. We are Grace Life Komi on all these platforms. Also, for more information about the ministry of Pastor Chimri and Funke Oahuna, kindly visit chimrioahunaministry.org. You can also send us your requests and testimonies via email today through chimdiwahunaministry at gmail.com. We are dedicated to feeding your spirit man with spiritual meals that we edify, equip, and engender your growth in the knowledge of God. Remain connected to Grace Life Komi. God bless you. Jesus is Lord.